working on the 21st uh, century generation towards a globalized industrial technology. And it was being held April 24 to 25, 2019, at Chibet uh, Stay and Resort in San Mateo, Rizal. Representing the uh, CSCPSC is uh, Dr. Ram Hari and the Director General of this uh, faculty, uh, Mr. San Diego. And with the members of the representative by the Bakwit, not other than Dr. Rahul F. Moyong, President of the EU, Science and Technology University, and the Bakwit members. In addition to Bakwit, the CSE, CSE also established a memorandum of agreement or understanding with the following Filipino State College and University. The listed are Sambuanga City State for Technologies. Marikina Polytechnic College and President Mar uh, Ramon Magsaysay State University and the host of this uh, year, um, uh, Bulacan State University. Its aim is to have new partnership, will be able to formalize and pursue the new opportunities for possible collaboration and information exchange. No further ado, again, good afternoon, Everyone, welcome to the 4th International Conference and 19th National Conference with the team gearing up green industrial technology education for a sustainable future. I am Dr. Marvin Tuliao, the NSTP Director of this university, and I have the honor to serve you as the session chair for this presentation. Before we begin, I would like to remind everybody to please silence your mobile phone electronic devices to avoid any disruption during the presentation. Also, please remain, uh, refrain from leaving the room while the presentation is uh, speaking out of respect of the, uh, their hard work and dedication. In line with this the exciting lineup of this presentation today, governing various topic in the engineering, ICT, and emerging technologies, I want to extend my gratitude to all researchers who have contributed their works to this session. And may I read the uh, guidelines for the paper presentation, but I will be just focused on the three. Uh, no? The presenter is given only 10 minutes for the presentation. There will be no limit in the number of PowerPoint slides, as long as the presenter will be able to present within the 10 minute uh, time limit. The facilitator provides a signal and it will be uh, signed as a signal or with the, uh, the one paper with the number of minutes and five minutes, last two minutes and time is up. Okay? And it will be a uh, flash. Uh, I will not distract your presentation in the respect on being the presenter of the day. And then there will be a question and answer period after the uh, paper presentation. And the last will be the screening and awards committee shall also determine the best paper and the best uh, presented per area. The question and answer session is valuable opportunity for the audience to engage with the presenter and to gain deeper insights into their research. I encourage everyone to actively participate during the Q&A portion by asking questions or sharing their thought, constructive feedback, and insight questions as essential to foster a robust academic uh, environment. May I uh, read to you the criteria for the best presentation or the being a uh, paper and best presenter. The criteria course in the best presenter timing delivery 20%, organization of the presentation 20%, content 20%, Q&A or the knowledge 30%, visual aids and materials 10% with a total of 100%. Criteria for the evaluation of best paper, relevance to the regional and national issues and concern 20%, responsiveness to social, cultural, socioeconomic, socio-political issues to address the needs of the community, 20%, uh, potential use of uh, results for the policy making, 
extension program production, and commercialization, 20%. Validity of the research based on the empirical result and conclusion, 20%. The grammar organization of the manuscript, readability, 20% with the total, 100%. May I now present to you the panel members, headed by uh, Dr. Uh, Eunice Custodio, uh, our Mr. Linus Internet Auditor, and we have Dr. Raul R. Bernaldez, the Department Head, Electrical and Mechatronics, uh, Technology, the College of uh, Industrial Technology. And we have here Engineer Donald Napiguera, the ISO uh, Internet Auditor of the University. In our tabulator, we have uh, Mom Rose Vereventura and Mom Julian Castellano. And the, te the technical, we have Sir John Michael Rosales. So I know that the presenters are now uh, eager to present their study. Let us proceed with the first presentation. May I call on and uh, please join us no? in uh, welcoming Solimar F. Moradas uh, from Ilo Science and Technology, as he present or will present the uh, water level controller. to my fellow uh, presenters, to the members of the industrial technology, uh, a pleasant good afternoon to everyone. So my presentation is a water level controller uh, together with uh, uh, Mr. Elmer El Shalongo, my fellow faculty of uh, Iloilo Science and Technology, Megao Campus. So for the introduction, water waste paint is uh, inevitable, but uh, we can minimize it. We can maximize the use of water to its purpose. Our homes in the rural, rural areas are using deep well and electric pump to extract water in the deep well into the water tank. So this occurred especially during summer when water was insufficient in some areas, and we need to maximize excess to overflow. We always need to oversee the water tank overflow with the storage water in the deep well. So at present, the uh, researcher lists some problems on water wastage and insufficient, such as when water overflow in water tanks, and during summer, water in the deep well becomes low and sometimes insufficient to fill the water tank. When no water in the deep well, the electric pump that extract water might overheat due to water to be sucked. So with the problem, the design water level controller with a level indicator to protect water wastage over here to motor pump to be transferred over here. So this is also to uh, aim to design and construct water level controller and level indicator and to evaluate the water level controller and indicator to design efficiency and to test the efficiency of the device. So this is also significant to the technology provide an intelligent system to protect the motor and determine water volume to be drawn from the source base on its availability. So our methodology, we are using the technology or developmental approach. A model determines requirement and parameters, design prototype, testing, and implementation, refinement, and maintenance. So these are the results of our uh, acceptability. So the overall design is uh, uh, very acceptable. And the results of the efficiency is also very efficient. So test results shows that the water level controller passed the different test on sufficient and insufficient water. It was, it was noted that in different trials, in month, the device was working properly. The evaluation of the homeowners with deep well and water tanks affirmed to the field work done by the researchers. 
the design was but we get very acceptable and highly efficient working condition as water development project. So it's recommended that technology developed is efficient and beneficial based on various test results and is ready to be adopted. So these are my our references. <coughs> Thank you and uh, good afternoon once again. Thank you, sir, uh, for the information and presentation of your study. The question and answer will be at the last part of the uh, last presenter. After uh, they presented all, then there will be a question and answer afterwards. The next uh, presenter for this day is uh, Sir Richard Pierce from President Ramon Magsaysay State University. And who will be talk about development of AC and DC food dehydrator, sir? I would like to present the development of ACDC food dehydrator. The food industry is a big part of our people's lives, and the food market needs to grow so that the community needs for the needs for the market demand for the food needs to be met with the rise in the quality and amount of food. Because of the technology changes, the food processing industry is starting to move away from the old methods and towards new ones. A more effective and efficient modern system is meant to boost productivity without lowering the quality of their soil. The small or our uh, micro business that, uh, that community groups usually run still with traditional ways to make things. This conventional system has made it harder to make things, so micro industries are taking to longer grow worldwide. The hydration is one of is the one of the oldest method of the preserving food while our ancestors lived in the sun to dry food. Today, we have a commercial equipment and home appliances that can remove bacteria forming moisture. This process preserves food for much longer than its ordinary shelf life. The main objective of the study is to design, construct, and evaluate the efficiency of an ACDC food dehydrator in terms of safety, functionality, and economy. Design, design the ACDC food dehydrator, construct the ACDC food dehydrator, determine the capabilities and limitations of the ACDC food dehydrator, and evaluate efficiency in terms of safety, functionality, and economy. The researcher, the, the project description, the researcher successfully designed the AC food uh, ACDC food dehydrator, a device used to dry food in minimal time and lower cost by utilizing by the ACDC power supply and hot air circulation in the inside of the dehydrator cabinet. The researcher successfully fabricate the ACDC food dehydrator, the device as a heater and blower that circulate the hot air inside the cabin, a microcomputer temperature controller to monitor the heating of the device. Mesh trays are available for the food platform. This device can dry food by utilizing by alternating current and direct current supply. The, the time of food processing is drying and depending on the thickness of the food. The easy dc food dehydrator is being powered by the easy power and DC power. That lessens the cost in the electric wheel. It can dry food for a short period of time depending on the thickness Thickness of the food average drying in time in four hours. The, pro uh, the project evaluation in terms of safety, uh, 4.47 uh, 4 moderate efficient, and functionality highly efficient, economy moderate efficient, 
the average weather man wind is moderate if uh, moderately efficient. The researcher presented the design and fabrication of the ECDC pool dehydrator following the requirements and procedures designed by the researcher. The ECDC pool dehydrator successfully built with all functionality the devices should have based on the design. The ECDC pool dehydrator can put using minimal electric consumption since it will be utilized the DC power supply and dry food and minimal time. The overall assessment of the ECDC pool dehydrator obtained a weighted bed of 4.38 4, 4, 4 integrated and moderately efficient in the level of efficiency. And that's a reference and thank you everyone. Thank you, Sir Richard, for sharing your research with us. Congratulations, Sir. We go now to the third uh, presenter, is uh, Sir Edsel Toralfa from Botanga State University. The title of his uh, research study is the design of real-time soil monitoring system using Norawan technology. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, panel. So uh, today I'm here to present uh, my research entitled "Design of Soil Real Design of a Real-Time Soil Monitoring System Using Garawan Technology." So first, I will give you an idea of what is in, uh, my study. It's all about wireless sensor network. So a wireless sensor network is a uh, composed of one or more wireless sensor nodes. Uh, it is also as a system which we can remotely monitor in the remote areas. And this wireless sensor network is also mostly used in agricultural uh, sectors or agricultural devices. So in, in my study, a uh, soil monitoring system is focused on agricultural sector, which is in the Philippines there, has, there is a 47% of agricultural land which is the agriculture uh, play a vital, ro vital role in sustaining human life and ensuring its productivity is top of importance. However, we all know that in the Philippines, uh, farming or the traditional farming is often not efficient when it comes to monitoring system or advanced smart farming. So as you can see on the figure, uh, there is a little bit uh, decrease of production in the Philippines. This data is from Philippine Statistic Authority from 2021 and 2022. And also, uh, the Philippine GDP from agriculture, agriculture is also decreases. So what is the problem? There is some issues in the Philippine agriculture uh, which is the land is being enroached upon by the housing and industrial sectors. Uh, absence of critical programs or efficient monitoring system, 
absence of advanced technology when it comes to agriculture. So the lack of real-time soil monitoring system has been identified as a significant challenge in modern agriculture. So traditional soil monitoring system methods involve manual sampling, the performance analysis, which the small farmers is difficultly uh, adapt those uh, sampling. So the solution is we develop the uh, real-time soil monitoring system, which in this project, we use waterfall methodology where, uh, where the development process was divided into three phases, the data gathering, signing, coding, and the testing and deployment. So the data gathering, uh, this is the first step where in uh, manual gathering of data from uh, the forms is utilized. And after that, after we gathered all the data that we need, uh, we developed a microcontroller, uh, which is locally made at our department. And this technology or this uh, project aims to develop advanced soil monitoring system that provides real-time soil, mon uh, soil parameters, which is uh, using LoRaWAN technology. So see, LoRaWAN technology is a long-range uh, low-powered wireless communication device, which we don't have need more uh, in baga, we need no, uh, more budget because this normal technology don't need a load, don't, uh, do, do not need internet connection. All this process is in a local area network. Then after that, we we gather the, all the data saka po natin siya lalagay dun sa cloud server or this through internet. So the soil monitoring system comprises uh, sensors embedded in the field which collect the data parameters such as moisture content, uh, pH level, nutrient saturation which is the nitrogen, potassium, and the phosphorus of the soils. Then after that, it will transmit to the gateway which is also using LoRaWAN technology and analyze, uh, send the data to the server and analyze it. Then after that, uh, the user can view it through internet or in a mobile application. So as a result, uh, the farmers can view through the website that we develop the, all the parameters included uh, in the project. And also, uh, if the sensor is triggered or uh, gets the set point that we need, for example, the soil, soil moisture is getting low, the, the recipient or the user will receive a message through an application that they need to uh, water the plants. But this project is also can be integrated into an uh, automated irrigation system, which is the project can automatically uh, water the farm. As a conclusion, this research demonstrates the effectiveness and the potential of LoRaWAN based soil monitoring system in supporting the precision agriculture and sustainable crop management practices. By, har by harnessing the power of Internet of Things and advanced communication technologies, farmers can make informed decisions and optimize the agricultural practices for enhanced product productivity and resource efficiency. Thank you, sir. We're going to go to the next uh, presenter. The, the, uh, sir Jose Apostol, entitled uh, The Research Solar Mobile Charger Station. So, President of the Mobile Charger Station. Good afternoon, everyone, especially to our panelists. I'm here to present the Solar Mobile Charging Station. Introduction. As we are aware, technology that originated.
introduction. As we all aware, technology that originated in our hands dominates the lives of today youth. If we think back to when mobile technologies like smartphone and other electronic gadgets first entered our society, we can help but see how integrated we have become into our daily life. A solar charge charger uses solar energy to charge battery or deliver electricity to a device. These solar chargers are often portable and can power electronics wherever there is sunlight. Its solar panel can generate voltage and hundreds of ampere hour of capacity, sufficient to charge our electronic gadget and equipment. So some solar panels that are put in immovable locations, such as rooftops or grounds, use in acid batteries to charge. However, the solar charger may essentially be installed anywhere and connected to a battery bank, developed on their own to store energy for optic usage. It's also a tool for energy conservation. Objectives. The main objective of this study is to design, construct, and evaluate the efficiency of the solar mobile charging station in terms of safety, functionality, and economy. Design the solar mo mobile charging station. Construct the solar mobile charging station. Determine the capabilities and limitations of the solar mobile charging station. Evaluate the efficiency of the solar mo mobile charging station in terms of safety, functionality, and economy. Project description. The researchers have successfully designed the solar mobile charging station, a device used to charge different type of mobile device. Device can maintain the harvesting energy from sunlight and store it on battery. It has also breaker installed in different points from solar panel to battery and inverter, a tool charging outlet. The device was constructed with the following significant parts. So solar panel is used for converting sunlight into electricity. Charge controller serves as voltage regulate, regulator. Inverter, battery, frame part, and all weather AC outlets. Project structure. The research successfully fabricated the solar mobile charging station, following the development process from planning and designing project development, testing and validation, recommendation and finalization. Capabilities and limitation. The solar mobile charging station is being powered by solar panel by harvesting sunlight, storing energy to solar battery breakers are installed on every line from solar to invent inverter until outlet. Project evaluation is averaged, average rate and mean is 4.28. Conclusion. The researcher presented the design and fabrication of the solar mobile charging station, following the requirements and procedure designed by the researchers. The solar mobile charging station is successfully built with all the functions and limitations of the device and tested based on the design. The solar mobile charging station can function by using sunlight. The overall assessment of the solar mobile charging station obtained a weighted mean of 4.38 as moderately efficient in the level of efficiency. These are the references. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And moving up on the next uh, presenter, uh, Sir Rickson. So we don't have uh, Sir Rickson here. So we go to the next, uh, Sir Brian Carlos Akai. And man, Sir Peter. From Cebu Technological University, the title of his research in coding proficiency of BSI to computer technology students Industry base literacy plan. So,
Okay, uh, good afternoon everyone, especially to our uh, panel of experts. Uh, I am uh, Peter Calarian from Cebu Technological University, uh, a licensed professional teacher and master's degree holder in industrial technology. Okay, so for introduction, um, I, I am also a data entry specialist uh, since 2011 until 2017 in a BPO company located at IT Park, La Hope, Cebu City. Since then, uh, since that year, 2017, I have been part of the CCICT uh, faculty at the CTU main campus. And today I'm going to present a research which, has, which was related to my previous industry experience as data entry specialist conducted during my master uh, studies last 2017. Uh, this research is uh, in line with ICT, of course, which everybody here, I believe, can uh, relate uh, well. The title of my research is uh, Encoding Proficiency uh, BSIT, uh, during that time, Bachelor of Science in Industrial Technology, major in Computer Technology, students. Uh, the industry-based literacy plan. So what is encoding proficiency? Uh, being, uh, for me, uh, encoding proficiency is being productive in data entry-based um, transactions achieved uh, through fast typing with accuracy. Being productive is uh, you are equipped with skills, techniques, and correct practices in achieving high-quality performance. And industry-based literacy plan, um, it simply puts heavy emphasis on the techniques in achieving fast typing speed with, of course, accuracy. These techniques are incorporated now in the computer literacy uh, subject or in the syllabus of computer literacy subject. So these are the contents of my presentation. Introduction, methods, uh, results and discussion, and then conclusion. Uh, the aims of this research, first, no, know the world's permanent or WPM typing status of the first year BSIT computer technology students of an SUC coming from different schools in their secondary education. The respondents um, were first year students. They are all 117. The WPM net typing speed uh, will tell if the students type uh, very fast uh, which is 66 to 80 words per minute, fast, 46 to 65 words per minute, intermediate, 36 to 45 words per minute, slow, 26 to 35 words per minute, and very slow, if less than 26 words per minute. And the, the net typing speed is the gross typing speed minus the errors. Next, second is to identify the factors or variables that may have significance on their, on their typing speed and accuracy proficiency. Next, use these identified variables to establish industry-based literacy plan, thus letting all students, regardless of course taken, to achieve proficient encoding. So introduction, these are just based on my realization and of course based on the facts that some, some, Fresh graduates, uh, fresh, fresh uh, graduate job seekers landed to company having tasks not related to their field of specialization, based on my uh, observation. And BPO nowadays, now, even until now, uh, are still a booming no, business which requires proficient in coding. There are chances for all students to become proficient uh, regardless of the course taken, uh, they have the chances to become proficient in encoding uh, through proper keyboarding and practice through by taking computer literacy subject. So thus, this will become their alternative job, especially for those graduates who do not um, acquire job now based on their specialization. Methods. 
The methods uh, utilized here is the input, the input process output. Now for the input, uh, we have the identified variables uh, related no, to keyboarding. Next, the extent of inboarding proficiency as a speed and, uh, and accuracy. The significant relationship between speed and accuracy uh, and identified variables. The classes, of course, the questionnaire, and then typing master software in getting the WPM. Then the output is the industry-based literacy plan. Now this uh, industry-based literacy plan, this is uh, incorporated no, uh, to the computer literacy subject taken by all students. Now it results in discussion. So what are these variables um, that may have significance to the typing speed and accuracy of the students? So these are the variables which have significant relationship to typing speed and accuracy. First, the gender. Next, the computer education background, the level of coding exercises, or the level of keyboarding exercises completed in that uh, semester, level length of time since using computer, and then internet surfing and chatting activities, and then computer gaming interest activities. And these variables which have no relationship, significant relationship to typing speed and accuracy, the age, the personal computer access, and time allotment for keyboarding exposure. Okay, for gender, for gender, 52% uh, were female and 48% were male. And uh, implications, uh, according to the results of the study, gender orientation, either male or female, or even all genders no, consisting the LGBTQ, etc., matters now when it comes to achieving important proficiency. Possibly because on this word commitment and discipline and practices, important proficiency is achieved through constant practice. So the intended industry-based literacy, uh, literacy plan for this is instill commitment and discipline to achieve proficiency in encoding. Next, on the computer education background, um, computer literacy subject is their primary source of the background, uh, computer education background. The implication is, uh, of course, it does matter. Uh, there must be proper education and training for keyboarding and, and of course, achieving this type typing. The industry-based literacy plan is, uh, there must be one-on-one -on -one computer to student ratio in computer literacy subject. Next, for the uh, level of encoding or encoding exercises, um, I think, I believe, no, we can all relate uh, on this, on this uh, identified variables, especially on these variables which have a significant relationship in a uh, level of encoding exercises, it must be uh, completed in that whole or intended a semester. Then length of time uh, since using computer, it could be uh, some some of the students were only having experience just in that college uh, years. So it also matters to uh, when it comes to achieving uh, important proficiency. And for these um, variables which do not have significant relationship, I will focus on the personal computer access. It does not matter if the student is accessing it whether in school, at home, or internet cafe. What matters is the daily uh, basis on the keyboarding uh, exposure or practice. Now, conclusion, the study revealed that majority of respondents had a really slow uh, typing speed, uh, which is described as below 26, uh, 26 words per minute. Then prior and current keyboarding experiences and practices had had significant effects to typing speed and accuracy. Next, last, the adoption of industry-based literacy plan may help students to improve their typing speed and accuracy. So that's all my presentation. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Before we call on the next presenter, may I request uh, 
Sir Siyong Gilbert and Sir Saldi to please present uh, your PowerPoint to our technical uh, uh, people so that uh, they can uh, have your PowerPoint be presented to our later. Okay? So the next presenter for this afternoon is uh, Mabrita for her study on Potontan COVID-19 contact tracer mobile app using Google Maps from West Visayas State University. Ma'am. Good afternoon everyone, especially to our panel members. Uh, my name is Rita Haudian from the West Visay State University, Bukatani Campus, Lima. And I'm going to present today my research entitled Bukatani COVID-19 Contact Tracer Mobile App Using Google Maps. Okay, these are the things that I'm going to discuss. So the background of the study, objectives, results, or, uh, results and discussion, conclusions, and acknowledgement of the findings. So to give an idea about my study, so we have COVID-19 pandemic which emerged in 2019 and rapidly spread across the globe post significant challenges to public health systems worldwide. So to control the transmission of the virus, effective contact tracing strategies were crucial in identifying and notifying individuals who we have come in contact with COVID-19 positive individuals or patients. So however, during the early stages of pandemic in 2020, Many countries lack dedicated contact tracing applications, leading to heavy reliance on traditional contact tracing methods uh, like uh, conducting interviews and uh, using mobile phones. So these methods were often time consuming, resource intensive, and limited in their ability to provide timely and accurate information. So, in response to the challenges faced by the traditional contact tracing methods, there was a need to develop innovative and technological driven solutions that could enhance the efficiency and effectiveness of contact tracing efforts. So, in my research, I aim to address this need by developing a contact tracing application utilizing Google Maps, a widely used and accessible mapping platform. So considering that the uh, pandemic is now over, so I think uh, I'll be, this research can be used in the future. So by leveraging the functionalities and widespread of adoption of Google Maps, the application sought to track the origin and locations visited by infected individuals Enabling more accurate identification of potential contacts and timely locations. So, here are the objectives of the study. So, first is to determine the software requirements of the rural health unit, personal contracing contact or close contact individuals of COVID patients in the municipality of the country. So, this is about the needs assessment of our of the health personnel. So after determining the needs assessment of the rural health personnel, so second is to design a contact tracing mobile application or software. Then the third one, after the designing, of course, to develop a contact tracing mobile application using Google Maps. And the last one, after designing, developing, of course, to test, to measure the effectiveness of the software, the last one is to evaluate the software by the IT experts and of course by the end users in terms of functional stability, 
performance efficiency, compatibility, usability, reliability, security, mutability, and portability. So here are the results of the uh, study. So first, uh, actually the results and uh, the results and discussions of the study has uh, three phases. So phase one, the reports of survey, the risk assessment. So this is the answer of the first objective, the risk assessment. So in this case, it presents the results of a survey assessing the interest level, so the, the interest level of the rural, rural health unit personnel in implementing the contact tracing mobile app using Google Maps for the Patagan community with the aim of combating the COVID-19 pandemic. So the result, all respondents uh, expressed a high level of interest with a mean score of P in learning and using the contact tracing mobile app which indicates a strong desire among the personnel to utilize the app as a tool to assist the Patagan community in combating uh, COVID-19. So all respondents show a high level of interest. So all the respondents demonstrated a high level of interest in downloading and sharing the contact tracing mobile app. So all residents of Patagan, this indicates a strong willingness among the personnel to promote widespread adoption of the app within the community. So overall, the results of the research indicate a consistent significant level of interest among the survey personnel in implementing the contact tracing mobile app using Google Maps. The findings suggest that the personnel are highly motivated to utilize and promote the app as a means to combat COVID-19 pandemic in the Patagon community. So the phase uh, two, so the design, so the software design was carried out using the UNL or Unified Modeling Language with a particular focus on activity diagram only. So this is the diagram. And furthermore, a contact tracing mobile app was developed using different languages such as PHP, MySQL, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and Spanish. So these are the examples of the screenshot of my app. So this is how the administrator uh, add the information of the residents of Patagon. Then the other one is, this is the sample of the screenshot where the, uh, all the mobile, uh, mobile numbers have captured by the uh, patient. Then the Google Maps, the exact location of the patient. And this is the screenshot of the mobile of an, of an end user. It sees here the, his or her mobile numbers and also the exact location of the patient. So the mobile app was enhanced with the integration of the Google Maps API, enabling access to location data and mapping functionalities. So the app displayed the user's current location to provide accurate and up-to-date information the researcher established seamless uh, communication between the app and the Google Maps API. So the phase three, the results of the software. So validation and evaluation by the IT experts and the end users. So for IT experts, Experts rated, uh, rated various aspects of application and the findings indicate that it demonstrates a high level of quality across different dimensions in terms of functional suitability, the application integrity meets the necessary requirements and performs its intended tasks satisfactorily. So it also operates efficiently in terms of speed, resource utilization, and response time. Compatibility is another strength as the application is deemed compatible with various devices, operating systems, related software, ensuring a seamless user experience across platforms, it can be Android or um, Apple. So the IT uh, the experts appreciated its user friendliness and intuitive navigation, giving it a high rating for usability. 
for the application also performed a variety in terms of repeatability, robust security procedures were in place, establishing a high level of trust and security protocols of the application. So further, furthermore, the application was considered easily maintainable with efficient procedures for updates, modifications and repairs. Lastly, it is excellent portability that enables effortless transfer and use across different platforms in the environment. Okay, for the end users, the COVID-19 contact tracing application algorithm by the testing and evaluation with ratings provided by end users. So these are the ones who use the mobile app. So based on the ISO IEC 25010 rating and systems and software quality characteristics, the application application performed exceptionally well in various aspects of software quality. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Ma. Uh, the next presenter is uh, Sir Seyong Gilbert uh, from Iloilo Science Technology University, research uh, study entitled EVKI FT. Good, good afternoon, everyone. Back with Never quits. <coughs> so MK, uh, short for Engine Valve Keeper Installer. Hi, my name is Seyong Gilbert G. Abaygar, a faculty of the Automotive Department from the institution Iloilo Science and Technology University. So here are the agenda. So introduction, the image shows a technical engine valve assembly is composed of a retainer and keepers fitted into the top of the valve and held by the springs which keeps the valve in a normally closed position. So kung familiar kayo, uh, uh, makina sa makina, no? engine overhauling and uh, cylinder head servicing. No? So the problem during the installation process, nagkakaroon po tayo ng tinatawag na uh, minsan nakalsik yung ano yung bulb keepers during installation, no? So at saka minsan naiipit yung ating kamay, no? So and uh, yung mga gamit na available, uh, minsan uh, it takes nahihirapan, no? Kung isa lang yung gagawa, especially on bulb installation, no? inserting the bulb keeper. No? So therefore, uh, yung pangapat, uh, it takes installation time uh, longer. No? So this problem led in the development of FK no? in order such not from happening. No? So this is a comparison no? of the FK versus the available uh, prior arts no so meron tayong uh, bulb keeper plier no bulb spring compressor adapter at saka bulb spring compressor no so hinati po natin yung process no ng installing of the bulb keepers no so meron tay meron tayong tatlong steps no so compress the retainer and spring place the keepers in the retainer release the spring to hold the bulb and then it's done no so unfortunately no yung mga presented prior arts, no? Okay, yung may X dyan, uh, ibig sabihin, hindi niya kayang gawin, no? It requires external force, no? Meaning, the mechanic will manipulate, no? In order uh, for the tool to function. So, dalawa, no? So, the, uh, that creates, no? Yung problem na kanina sinabi ko, no? So, while the development key, no? Yung compression ng retainer, kaya niya, no? Yung keeper in the retainer, hindi matalsik kasi nasa loob lang, no? Sakaling hindi man mag-engage, uh, mag no? Yung keeper, hindi pa rin mawawala, no? At saka, pag tinitawan mo, okay, kusang maglalak, no? 
So it makes the device no, a standalone. So in the picture, no, uh, you may get na, na encircled, na encircled na uh, portion ng cylinder head by apat na bulbs. No? So ikita nyo sa screenshot ng video, it requires only a little less than few minutes no, para ma-install lahat yun. So methodology, no? The developmental research, no? The IPG was adapted, no? IPG relates to tools in Indian's bulb servicing and repair, specifically designed to install the bulb keeper. No? The fabricated IPG was subjected to trial and error test until ready, no? A research-made instrument is used to measure design, functionality, and performance of the FG in a checklist format, no? There were 32 respondents participated in the expertly distributed as follows, no? The automotive technician, 17, ito po yung gumagawa na, yung mga naka, ano, sa industry talaga, no? Yung daw, Toyota, Ford, and regular, no? Samantala, yung freelance technician, ito yung consider natin, ha? Yung mga technician dati na lumabas na sa kumpanya, no? On their own, no? So, heavy equipment mechanics and the medium scale shop mechanics, no? So, ito yung mga shop, no? Na walang background dun sa dealership, no? Pero may mga, ano sila, may mga uh, registration, no? Okay. Then, the data gathered were processed for statistical analysis. So, the results and discussion, no? So this data presents no, the expert opinions no, on the test in design, functionality, and performance. Uh, lahat po sila no, ay pasok uh, doon sa highly acceptable label no, in varying uh, uh, numbers. No? So makikita nyo. No. So the table shows the experts were highly acceptable as to the design functionality and performance of the IPG with the mean scores which fell within the scale of 4.21 to 5, the previous slide, no? Range, na ibig sabihin ay highly acceptable. No? The standard deviation which ranged from 0.58 to 6.25 showed a narrow dispersion of the design functionality and performance above the means indicating homogeneity of the respondents' ratings in terms of design functionality and performance. No? Simply implied that the FG is highly capable of its design, can function well, and perform better. So conclude. Conclusion, no? So the very high acceptance of the experts in terms of design, function, and performance has allowed the bulb keeper installation solve the problems mentioned before and content, no? Uh, yung mga ex, ex don kanina, no? Na mga prior arts that could not do, no? So indeed, the demand of its usage is high. So acknowledgement po, no? The Isat University, no? The outgoing president, Dr. Olaf Muyong, Dr. Angut, Dr. De Leon, Engineer Franci, of course, the Pakwit, no? Incorporated, and the Bulacan State University. So reference, here, here are my references. No? Okay, and that's all, thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Our next presenter, uh, Sir Salgi. Okay. If none, we go to Sir Remar Apolinario from Bicol State, uh, Bicol University, entitled uh, "The Study in Innovation of Adjustable Mechanical Tool in Line with Injection Pump." Thank you, Professor, sir. Salvi. Well, Sir Salvi, so as he, Sir Remar, 
culinary itself. Uh, Kapi State University Backpack Solar Powered Glass Cutter. So the panel of experts, fellow researcher, a pleasant good afternoon. I am Dr. Raymara Polinario, and I'm at Capi State University in Campus Rua City. This afternoon I will be going to present my study uh, entitled Backpack Solar Power Glass Cutter. So for my introduction, glass cutter machines are very essential in maintaining the surroundings. However, they are gasoline powered and not environmentally friendly. The development of backpack solar glass cutter in this study is based on the principle of alternative energy encompasses all those things that do not consume fossil fuel. Thus, the developmental method of research was deployed by in innovating a solar-powered glass cutter utilizing a recycled auxiliary fan with power saving features a low wattage both discharging and charging capacity. The uniqueness of this design with a solar panel placed in backpack and storage battery inside in composition and operating performance makes this glass cutter subjects for acceptability of the end user. Next slide please. So the objectives of this study Determine the charging rate of backpack powered solar cutter in terms of milliampere hours in operation. Determine the discharging rate in terms of wattage used, the milliampere hour of battery of solar powered glass cutter without solar and with solar charging wind used in cutting glass within the area of 100 square meters. Determine the level of acceptability of the solar powered glass cutter as it to its design, composition, and operating performance. So, methodology. So, the methods design of fabrication, testing, and evaluation is used in this project. Method one development, method of research, design criteria. Storage power source, portable, sustainable, low wattage, easy to operate, and innovative, innovate, design plan and fabrication. This was the method one. Method one, please. Okay, so this is now the methods used to. On the diagram, we have a solar panel, solar charger, battery, display design, bolts with amperes, the switch and fabricated solid steel drive, and auxiliary fan motor as the process. So the pit, pit, you, <coughs> pit to wrap of backpack solar powered, now as you can see, so that is uh, integrated in one system alone. So the backpack, in figure two, isometric view of the power source equipment as backpack design. So figure three, the improvised solid stain drive of glass cutter. So next. The method two. So it, the method two charging rate of the backpack solar powered cutter was tested in terms of mini upper hours. Likewise, its charging rate in terms of what is used in milliampers, power of the battery of the solar power glass cutter without solar and with solar charging. The empirical data were gathered through experimentation and observation in order to calibrate the performance and specifications of the machines in three trials. 
Okay, for the method three, so the device or the system design composition and operating performance is can evaluated for its stability using the adaptive evaluation sheets by 30 evaluators composed of 10 industrial technology in academe, from electrical and electronics technology, where we described electrical engineers, seven casual workers from DPWH, three local farmers, and seven utility agents. Next slide. So result and discussion. So as you can see in table one, so we have the battery capacity of 7,000 milliampers, charging rate 700 milliampers, and the charging capacity is 10%, and charging has power with 16.8. So it shows that it was found out that the 700 charging when it works 10 hours to so fully charge the battery using solar panel. However, the experiment was only done during the sunny days when the sun had picked a maximum heat capacity of 9 a.m. to 4 a.m. So in table 2, using the machines without uh, Without solar, result when the product is tested, when it was calculated in the solar panel, it will show 37.68 watts, which discharge of 1,525 milliampers as per hour, and usable for four hours and 30 minutes at declared area of 100 square meters of grassland. So table three, as Result of discharging rate, the product is tested when connected with solar panel. And the researchers theorized that the extra power operated with the grass cutter came from the solar panel from the battery. The result is measured parameter shows the grass cutter was shown 13. Point 853 watts only at the rate of 650 milliampers of the battery and not about 12.5 hours of continuous operation before the battery was drained. And of course, for table 4, at the acceptability of the end users, it shows that there is the product evaluation, which was dimmed very acceptable in terms of design, composition, operating performance, and was advised the mass produce to help the government and save money when grass cutter will be used for cutting grass. Okay, these are the product specification of my backup solar panel. So, 20 voltage, 12. 24 volts DC and the rest. The next slide, please. And conclusion. So that's last thing, the charging rate of backup solar panel was cutter. Cutter, within 10 hours, is fully charged. The battery will use. Will not use. The charging rate developed. The backpack solar powered grass cutter without solar panel is one. 1,525 milliampers and per hour and it takes 4.9 hours of the continuous drain of the battery. However, when it used to connect the solar panel, it will save to discharge the battery was only 560 milliampers per hour and it takes 12.5 hours of fully drain the battery. So the solar panel run the motor wind means, which means that with the solar panel connected, more than 60% of the of the power comes from the solar panel, resulting from prolonged use of solar grass cutter. So the innovation made the design, the use of materials, integration of the different grass, different parts, and its capacity for its purpose 
essentially have gained a formal political recourse concern there. The greater attributes thus it safe and very convenient in terms of eco-friendly and humanitarian activities. Okay, so there are the people behind my study and my references. And thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. So next uh, presenter, we have uh, Sir Romeo Eliasis. He is uh, from the University of Science and Technology of Southern Philippines. He started the design and development of remote control decorating machine. Sir? Good afternoon, panel of evaluators. My co-presenter, delegates, and of course, Dr. Rico. Well, this afternoon, I'm going to present to you the design and development of the remote control decorating machine. And I know that some of you here are only familiar with this kind of machine because this is usually used in agriculture. Or this is actually similar to a uh, uh, battle crosser because this is the one that will cross the, uh, the material that they are going to place in that decorating machine and it will produce uh, what we call a prime. Decorating machine is a technology of the growing agro industry that is used to create. Uh, the coconut husk and use the item like matrices, brasses, ropes, mats. Actually, the one that we are going to produce by this decorative machine is only a room material. So, if you want to have a product of mats, brasses, or even a floor mat like that, so you can use this kind of machine for the room material because this will produce uh, what they call the coil or the fiber, the coconut fiber, and of course the feet. So this is big, it seems like a sudas. Because this kind of machine, uh, the law will be able to the law will be produced here. Una, the law will be able to the from the kukuku na kas, and then the second is yung kid. It is really yung das. Okay? Designing and developing the remote control of the machine involves several steps and consideration. Such side, the control of the machine requires a material that we process and the level of the automation design and the specific requirements of the remote control system. Now remember, most of the uh, equipment, not only the decorating machine, are operated manually. Okay, so the operator, there is an operator and there is also a partner where we will, where we will place all the materials so that our talent are going to operate in some machine. But in my design here, I try to design an auto circuit where we can have the manual and we have also the remote control. I, I simply use a simple remote control here, and then you can even buy that in the online. And then uh, I try to integrate this with a control. Now what is this control? I use the magnetic starter. I use the uh, full voltage magnetic starter. I think one of our evaluators, uh, uh, expertise, expert rather, then he's very familiar with all these controls. So what I mean, I try to embed the uh, motor control, I mean the, the, uh, the remote control in uh, existing full voltage magnetic starter, or we call it magnetic atmosphere line starter, okay? To make the uh, operator easy for him to operate. Because this kind of remote control that I use, you, you can even uh, control the decorative machine 30 minutes from the equipment, okay? So instead of having two, people working for that kind of materials, then we will only use one. Why? Because if, if we want to stop the motor or the decoding material, but there's something wrong in the operation, so hindi mo siya tatakbo, pupunta to palangin off yung manual controller niya or support with that motor. But instead, he will use only the remote control or the transmitter. Next. The first step is to determine the specific requirement for the decoding so, ang ginagawa ko po, I do some benchmarking. Kasi wala po di ko pati yung machine ngayon. So, ang pinagpinagpinagpinagpinagpinagpinagpinagpinagpinagpinagpinagpinagpinagpinagpinagpinagpinagpinagpinagpinagpinagpinagpinagpinagpinagpinagpinagpinagpinagpinagpinagpinagp
Next. We have the objectives. The objective in the study was to develop and design the remote control in the machine. And then specifically it aims to design a decomplicated machine with a manual and remote control. Pag masisira yung remote control, may manual control at pa. So say it on. Okay? And then to develop and integrate and design elements of the remote control with the computing machine. Now remember, this is a combination of mechanical and electrical. Considering that I am an electrical expert, then I have to consult mechanical people, expert in mechanical. Okay? So there is what we call a, a lack of consultation of those people. In fact, we have some uh, what we call intramural soap ideas. And then we come up with a better idea. That is why I come up with this kind of resource. To evaluate the system performance in terms of acceptability, efficiency, durability, steadiness, and safety of the remote control <coughs> machine. Next. We have the vehicles, the design. Yes. With the help of the gathered data, this includes already consultation. The researcher proceeds to the next step, which is the designing of the prototype. Now, there are two ways that I design. The durability, the design of the recuperative machine, the mechanical part, as well as the controls. Because the control is only good for a remote. No? The next development, the development includes the processing of the materials, the construction of the prototype, and the installation of all the components inside the control box. And then the evaluation, of course, the researcher evaluates the project, proscopic questionnaire, randomly to the respondent to evaluate the prototype based on the statics, functionality, mobility, and other pairs of design. Next, the sort of discussion. After deciding, assembling the theory and renewing, even the Mr. Dennis by here, because some of those uh, materials are uh, what we call surplus. So I need to do some repair there, you know, to minimize no? to the economy of materials. And then to start the remote control of the computing machine, it will be tested. After gathering all the information from the previous studies and other related studies, I actually, in my case, the proponents had rapid testing of an evaluation of the remote control of the computing machine to ensure the quality of accuracy structure, durability, and personality of the machine. So we are keep on testing the machine no? to meet the expectation. Next. We have done a speeds up uh, drawing of the prototype. So you may notice that uh, I use the second map. You know what I'm going to do You know what I'm going to crush them to put a task. And then you use a motor, and then you know what I'm going to do with the back. You have to go and put the box. Next. And then you go an actual prototype. Makikita niyo po, may motor doon sa kanta yung blue at saka yung gray yung ang control box na dinidesign po yung control circuit. Okay? Lalo na yung remote control. And then, of course, the appearance of the recomputing machine. What is also good in this uh, research is this is a little bit more uh, coconut hat. You can even use a remotural uh, rest, no? In a high motor, in a fast motor, then you can also use that as fuel, or even yung mga, yung mga tomatis, kato yung mga vegetable, mga vegetable, yung mga kosong vegetable, and then, i-contrast ka yun, and then you will produce another product. The next, mayroon akong two views dito, no? In terms of materials. Next, ito po ang dalawa, yan po ang layout ng post buttons, layout ng uh, indicating lamps, and then ito the other side is, the layout of the control box inside the box. And then yung dalawa naman, yun na ang actual wiring and insulation of the motor control box. Next. Then ito po, ang product niya. Yung kamilang dry, yung murang picture, yan po ang kukunan material. Then yung pangalawa, yun na po ang product. No? The fiber. And then at ito naman, ito ang pin. Yung stool dust. Okay? So, dalawa yan. Pwede yung dry, pwede yung milk, no? The next. And then, of course, when it comes to aesthetic, the render rate is very good. Next. When it comes to functionality, again, the render the, the rate is uh, very good in terms of capacity of the machine. And 
And the other thing is the capacity of the Muslim to drive the new Quran Masjid, or rather the Quran in the state. Very, very good. Next. It comes to safety, it's still very good, because when the motor is in trouble, I report there as 75. And this is an overload delay. So when they put this an overload, automatically the motor will stop, and then the motor will use the same. That is why it comes to safety, that is very good. Next. When it comes to durability, in terms of efficiency and durability, nakikita din naman yung picture. Diba? Sorry talaga. So in terms of durability, walang problema. Okay? Then, next. In conclusion, of course, yung sinasabi ko kanina, in terms of evaluation, at the last, the mechanical competition and motor motor driving installation is done according to the design specification and have produced a good result in terms of productivity of the machine. In fact, there are only a few people who are going to move on and move on because we need to perfect it. Okay? So thank you and good afternoon. Thank you very much, sir. Huli pang po't magaling ay mahapot din. So, we are now the last. Sir Rickson Bundat. From Cebu Technological University, we study about development of mechanic fiber application for repair and maintenance servicing in Metro City, sir. I am Rickson Bundan from Cebu Technological University. My study entitled Development of Mechanic Finder Application for Repair and Maintenance Servicing in Metro Cebu. This application is a mobile application wherein motorcycle enthusiasts find repair and maintenance services. This application is developed because of the challenges motorcycle riders face in the unpredictable, unpredictable on-road breakdown which can occur at any time, anywhere. For the introduction, according to the Land Transportation Office, Region 7, there were 2,293,639 newly registered and 6,179,000 429 renewals of motorcycles, tricycles, and non-conventional motorcycles in the Philippines. Additionally, Region 7 has 114,370 newly registered motorcycles and 593,670 renewals for a total of 708,040 registrations made as of December 31, 2022. These are used for food delivery services, courier services, and motorcycle taxis like Food Panda, Grab, Grab Food PH, Lalapood Lala PH, Lalamo, Grab Express, LBC, and etc. So one of the problems experienced by motorcycle riders is the unpredictable on-road breakdown which could happen anytime, anywhere. anywhere. The need of this application is due to the increasing demand for the motorcycle riders who could experience 